Welcome to this live safety demo video production brought to you by the University of Colorado's Construction Safety Laboratory. Today we're going to talk about noise-induced hearing loss. Noise refers to any unwanted sounds in our environment and is one of the most prevalent hazards found on construction job sites. Although noise-induced hearing loss is almost completely preventable, roughly 10 million construction workers in the United States experience permanent hearing damage each year. By age 50, 60% of construction workers develop significant noise-induced hearing loss, resulting from exposure to dangerously high levels of noise at their job. This is bad news for the average construction worker, as hearing loss is both permanent and irreversible. Let's visit the science behind how sound is generated to better understand why noise-induced hearing loss occurs. Sound is a form of energy, much like gravity or heat, and is produced by vibrating objects. Take the classic example of a tuning fork. The fork consists of a handle and two tines. When hit with a hammer, the tines begin to vibrate back and forth, pushing and then pulling the surrounding air molecules apart. This motion creates sound waves, which carry outwards and eventually dissipate. The amount of energy, or loudness, of the sound is based on the amplitude of the sound wave and is measured in decibels. Sound frequency is controlled by the distance between sound waves, which determines if the sound is audible to the human ear. So how does the human body process sound waves, and what link does that have with noise-induced hearing loss? Sound waves traveling through the air are received by the outer ear and funneled into the inner ear towards the eardrum. The eardrum behaves much like an actual drum in that it vibrates as sound waves strike it. When the eardrum vibrates, a series of small bones in the inner ear begin to move back and forth. These three bones, often referred to as the hammer, anvil, and stirrup, are the smallest bones in the human body. The movement of these bones transmits vibrations directly into the cochlea, the organ that looks like a seashell. The cochlea is a fluid-filled organ lined with microscopic hairs, called stereocilia. These hairs are connected to a nerve network, called the auditory nerve, which turns vibrations into electrical impulses which the brain can interpret as sound. While the tiny stereocilia hairs inside the cochlea make it capable of processing a wide range of sound waves, it also leaves people vulnerable to damage from loud noises. In fact, the most common cause of hearing loss is damaged or destroyed stereocilia hairs inside the cochlea. These hairs can be permanently destroyed by a combination of two related factors, noise intensity and noise exposure. This damage accumulates over time, leaving people unable to hear higher frequencies, distinguish words, or hear over background noises. Remember that noise intensity, or loudness, is measured using decibels. Any noise above 75 decibels is capable of causing noise-induced hearing loss, depending on time of exposure. The louder the noise, the less time it takes for hearing loss to occur. For example, if you were to drive a race car or stand next to the speakers at a rock concert, you would be exposed to at least 140 decibels. At this level, noise-induced hearing loss would happen within seconds. You would feel a painful ringing sensation in your ears as the hairs inside the cochlea were quickly damaged or broken by intense sound waves. However, noise-induced hearing loss typically occurs at lower decibel levels on construction job sites because workers are exposed to noise over long periods of time. For example, if you are working on a project while using a table saw, you would be exposed to about 93 decibels of sound. Over the course of an 8-hour workday, this lower amount of sound energy would slowly damage the hairs inside the cochlea. While you probably would not feel any pain or notice any changes in your hearing, the damage would be exactly the same as if you had attended a rock concert. With so much exposure to loud noises on construction job sites, how can workers protect their hearing? Some solutions include modifications to the work site, the work activity, and personal protection equipment. At the job site, construction workers should only work near loud equipment when necessary. Simply doubling the distance from a sound reduces the noise intensity for a worker by 50%. Barriers can also be built around noisy work areas to lessen noise exposure for other workers on site, 
However, barriers can be expensive and reduce worker visibility. Additionally, older and typically louder equipment can be replaced with modern and quieter tools. Work activity can be scheduled to reduce worker exposure to noise by performing loud work when the fewest workers are on site. Personal protection equipment remains the most effective way to prevent noise-induced hearing loss. Earplugs should be used when sight noise levels are between 85 to 95 decibels. Ear caps should be used when noise levels are 96 to 104 decibels. Noise canceling earmuffs should be used for any work that generates noise above 105 decibels. To recap, noise induced hearing loss is completely preventable but still affects millions of construction workers each year. Hearing loss can occur from either short exposure to loud noises or prolonged exposure to moderate noises. Sound above 75 decibels can cause hearing loss over time as cochlea hairs become damaged. While project activity and schedules can be modified to decrease worker exposure to noise, the best preventative strategy is still to use protective hearing equipment. Do so and your hearing will thank you.